Hello, this is Joy Sightings number 44. I welcome you back. Today we read three more parables of Safed the Sage. They are On Duty Half Done, The Easter Bonnet, and Hollyhocks I Did Not Plant. On Duty Half Done it was winter and at time of snow, and some men cleaned their walks, and some did not. And the sun shone out, and some of the snow melted, and some did not, and then straightway did it freeze again. Now I have a neighbor who is always first to clean his walk, and I suspect that it is not because he feareth God, or doth regard man, but that he may have wherewith to boast, and to vaunt himself against his neighbor. And I came to his walk, and behold, the water had melted and run down upon it, and frozen so that it was like glass, and I did nearly break my neck in that place." And on the next day I did meet him, and he spake ill concerning his neighbors. And he said, They have no public spirit, neither do they clean their walks, but my walk is clean. And I said, Yea, it is clean, and it is the most dangerous walk in town. For they that left the snow, there may men walk safely. For men's feet have trodden it roughly, and when it freezeth, then is it indeed a hobbly place, but men's feet slide not. But before a man setteth foot on thy walk, then should he buy more accident insurance or a gun. And he said, What, thou dost reprove me for doing my duty and for cleaning my walk? And I said, For a good deed I reprove thee not. But know this, that the reward for the doing of one duty is the privilege of doing another. And he who cleaneth his walk so that it is slippery should keep a coal hod of sand wherewith to sprinkle the walk. And he said, Dost thou make a virtue of the conduct of those who lie in their beds while I shovel my walk? And I said, I praise them not, neither do I think them virtuous. But there is no vice like the half of a virtue, nor any sin like a duty half done. The Easter Bonnet Keturah spake unto me, saying, The spring hath come. And I answered, I have heard the lark, and seen the robin, and I have some hollyhock seed that I intend to plant. And Keturah said, It's time for me to select a spring hat. And I said, Thou hast a spring hat. And she said, It's all out of style. And I said, What should that matter, so long as it becometh thee? And she said, It becometh me no more. It is not becoming in me to wear an hat that is no longer in style. And I said, The styles are ridiculous. And she said, Nay, they are fine. Yet if they were ridiculous, that were no good reason for not wearing them. Wearest thou not stiff-bosomed shirts, and an hat and cubit in height, the same being the most ridiculous things that humanity ever wore? And I said, Yea, but I wear my shirts until they are worn out, and my hat requireth but one ironing in a year, and it lasteth always. And I said unto her, Last season's hats were ridiculous, and the year is well spent in that it showed to women how ridiculous they were. And next year's styles are ridiculous, as every man knoweth who seeth a new fashion plate before he seeth the apparel on the women folk he loveth to see dolled out. 
and the present year's fashions are ridiculous, but thou knowest it not. And Keturah said, It is not knowing it that preventeth it from being ridiculous. And she bought the hat, and it is ridiculous. But on her it is mighty becoming. Hollyhocks I did not plant. We lived three years in an hired house, both I and Keturah, while they builded the synagogue. And it was a new house wherein never man had lived, and the land about it was untilled and grown to weeds. But we caused the grass to grow and divers flowers, yea, and I brought thither hollyhocks, even the hollyhocks which the municipal mower cut down, and the three hollyhocks which it spared, and divers other hollyhocks. And three sides of the garden were walled about with them, so that when a stranger came and asked, Where is the house of Sophid the sage? They would say unto him, Behold, he dwelleth in the place of the hollyhocks. Now the building of the synagogue was finished, and the men of my congregation purchased an house that joined hard to the synagogue, and I and Keturah we came there and abode. And it was winter, so that we knew not what manner of flowers were planted there. And when the spring drew nigh, I spake often to Keturah and said, the hollyhocks that we planted where once the weeds were, behold, they are ours no more. And the warm winds blew from the south, and the rains watered the earth, and there began to grow in the garden of the house hard by the synagogue little young things that shall yet be flowers. Yea, and at the outer side of the garden, lo, there were hollyhocks growing. And there is a window that openeth from the room that is mine own, and beside it I beheld that young hollyhocks were springing up. And I called unto Keturah, and she came, and I said, Behold, the people who lived here before us were good people who feared God and loved beautiful things. Behold the hollyhocks whereon we have spent no labor. And Keturah answered and said, Verily, this is the reward of right living, that one passeth on to those who follow the fruits of the good which he doeth. For others shall enjoy the hollyhocks of our planting, and we shall enjoy the hollyhocks that were planted by those who were here before us. And I said, It is even so. And there are certain good people who have hollyhock seed, and they will send of it to me, and we will plant that also, and by the time we are through, this place shall have hollyhocks that grew as bulrushes grow in the land of Egypt. For the hollyhocks grew in Palestine, even in the land where Jesus lived, and the seed thereof was brought into the lands on the hither side of the Mediterranean by the men who fought in the Crusades that they might win back the sepulchre of Jesus, and they called it the Holy Hawk. Wherefore, after I am dead and gathered to my fathers, shall men say when they come where I have lived, Behold, these are the hollyhocks that were planted by Sophed, whom some men called the sage. And others will know nothing of Sophed, but the flowers will still be here. <laughs>